Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to uh, Torrance Parade Ground. It was, of course, uh, almost 101 years ago when young men from South Australia stormed ashore at Gallipoli. They were 20 years old, and uh, in fact the youngest was 14. On Saturday night we'll see a lot of 20-year-olds on the uh, football field at Adelaide Oval, and uh, while they'll each have their respective injuries, the, the likes of those that stormed ashore at Gallipoli uh, were not hammies and ACLs. They were, in fact, things of much more greater significance. And many of those 20-year-olds came back to Adelaide broken, uh, and the RSL was formed on the basis of looking after those 20-year-olds. We're very pleased that two very old institutions in South Australia, the Port Adelaide Football Club and the RSL, have teamed together to work on the, this year's ANZAC appeal uh, and to raise money to continue the work so that those 20-year-olds who returned from Afghanistan and Iraq today uh, will be looked after in the same way that our forefathers looked after them. We're very pleased that this relationship has built up over a number of years now uh, and that uh, this year we'll have some uh, additional festivities associated with the, uh, the game itself. Well, from Port Adelaide's point of view, um, you know, we feel very privileged um, to have the honour of, of playing in Adelaide on Anzac Day and the Anzac Day weekend and we've done that for, for many years now. It's the 13th year that we'll be awarding the major Peter Badco medal, Travis has won the last two of those, um, which uh, we are also very proud of. And you know the, the relationship that uh, Port Adelaide has with the RSL and, and uh, with the defence forces generally um, stretches back you know, more than a decade. Um, it, it reaches back into the history of the club. And many of our great players have had long and decorated careers uh, in the armed forces. And um, you know this is a. This has been a very tough week for, for Port Adelaide um, and uh, when, when you and footy clubs get into these sort of um, difficult times you, you hear um, conversations around teamwork and courage under it you know, when the adversity is around and you know I think that if you, if you just reflect on the, the major Badco story here's a, here's a guy who uh, in early 1967 um, did three heroic um, acts of bravery um, to win his uh, Victoria Cross. You know, the first one being, you know, he was running across a, an open field under machine gun fire, um, got through that, realised that an American medico had fallen behind him and went back in the face of that fire to, to rescue him. Now that's, uh, you talk about surf selfless acts, um, when it really matters, it puts the whole thing in perspective um, for, for us and our players. And I think that for us, that's the value of, uh, of these moments, um, not to try and um, connect ourselves in any way to the, to, to the sacrifices that have been made in the past, but to learn from them. And, and I think that, uh, you know, we, we, as I said, we see that as a great privilege. Travis, every game is important. We can ask uh, what's your significance this weekend. What does it mean for you? Oh, look, in terms of uh, Anzac Weekend and, and playing uh, Anzac Weekend in Adelaide, like Keith said, it's a, it's a huge honour and, and something we're very proud of as a, as a, as a, as a club and as a playing group. And uh, we're just, We'll be extremely honoured and excited to get out there Saturday night. And in, in terms of uh, last weekend and the performance we put in last weekend was really disappointing. And we need to turn around as a club and we need to turn around quickly. And uh, what better way than on a, a very special weekend in Australia's history and um, for, for football and the AFL a, a great weekend to be evol involved in and we're excited to get out there and uh, turn it around. You showed a lot of the blame this week um, but are you looking for effort from everyone? Yeah and that starts with our senior group uh, as I said uh, and that starts with me. Uh, we need a, a huge effort from our senior players and our core uh, leaders and, and, and the rest of the group flows from that. And, uh, you can't go blaming uh, you know, young guys that have come inside one or two years in. They, they've got to have direction from their senior players and we need to make sure we stand up and, and that has to start this Saturday night. Travis Hanna said he's put on the leaders to stand up. What's he said to you guys? Uh, basically just, just what I spoke about. He, he just needs effort and um, intensity from our senior players and uh, that is uh, you know, being aggressive and, and, and you know, defending really well and, and those sort of things that you see uh, that have probably been lacking in the last... Uh, probably three or four weeks, and we need to do that as a, as a senior leadership group. So the rest of the team fo follows from there. Why have they been lacking, though? 
Uh, that's a good question, and that's probably why we've been inconsistent because we haven't been able to, to put our finger on it. And, and, and really, the simple answer is it shouldn't be like that, um, you know. And, and you know, whether you know, there's probably different different reasons, but there needs to be uh, a certain standard that we need to accept. And, and right now, it's been too in, in, inconsistent. You've had a great career at Port. You've been fantastic. How you're coming under heat a little bit. First of all, is your body fine? Is there any issues there? And secondly, how do you feel about your own form? There's nothing wrong with my body. My body is uh, probably the best it's felt in a long time. Uh, so there's nothing wrong there. And uh, but my form's nowhere near where it needs to be. And uh, you know I need to accept that my form is uh, is not at the level it needs to be. And I, it starts with me and, and the rest of the leadership group. And uh, you know if we start to, to get back to where we uh, need to be, then the rest of the group will follow from there. Kenny said this morning that to you, for you personally, you might um, play a bit more in the centre square this week to get you back into that form. Have you spoken about that? What's, what's the plan there? Uh, only briefly. Um, you know, th this morning we've got our main session tonight, so that'll probably. We'll probably talk a little bit more about it there, but look, uh, wherever I play, I need to lead by example. Uh, whether it's uh, in the centre square or the back pocket or wherever it is, and my role is to captain the side, and that's uh, to lead with with uh, you know effort and intensity. Uh, so the like, rest of the group follows. I feel like you do most damaging work out of the middle, though. Oh look, I I love playing the middle. Certainly, uh, you know most midfielders love playing in the centre square. So uh, if I'm there on the weekend, I'll be uh, I'll be happy. Mr. Yes, Chairman said uh, publicly, obviously, that uh, he wasn't happy. It was a disgraceful effort. Um, questions to be asked, that sort of thing. What, what's happened during the week from that point of view from the executive level? Yeah, I think that he was he was answering a you know a person on social media, and you know we uh, we we just go about our business. You know, like I think that um, you, you, we're in professional a professional sport. Um, you know, I watched a guy who was the best golfer in the world implode on, uh, on a hole whilst playing the best golf he's ever played, right? Things happen. Um, you need to be calm in these situations uh, and you need to be really clinical about how you, how you look, look at the problems that, are, that, are, that emerged. Um, I think that the playing group and the coaching group have done that uh, with very, very little pressure or scrutiny from, from us. We have absolute faith in their ability to do that. Uh, and as I said, it's a dynamic industry. I'm, I'm watching a, a, a league at the moment deliver results that uh, are almost unfathomable you know, from last year. Um, so there is a lot going on um, in regards to game plans and, and, and how teams have evolved and, and changed and, and, and the influence of you know, selection. You know, I, you know, I, I think that uh, all of these things are coming into play. It's really early in the season. We're sorting each, each other out um, and uh, we'll, we'll be back on track really shortly. Trophy, welcome that open criticism from Koshi. Oh look, Koshi is um, you know extremely sport is supportive of the playing group and obviously the club and has been for a long time and a very passionate uh, supporter I guess of the club and look it's it's hard to hear from from someone that uh, you know we show uh, we respect highly um, but I think uh, you know with the rest of the criticism we've copped it's 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 probably rightly so that that. Um, you know the, the the effort on the the weekend was really disappointing. Uh, it's it's hard to hear from from someone we respect, and but we need to make sure that we turn that around. Hamish was talking about feeling lonely out there. How does that sort of happen, and how do you prevent that from happening again? Yeah, look, we we spoke about that uh, on Monday, uh, and really what it is is, uh, you know, when when things go bad as a as a, as a football club or um, any team sport. You know, you can you can tend to drift in your own sort of world a little bit out there, and and that's what I think he's talking about. You you, you tend to feel alone, and uh, you know, as a club and as a playing group, whatever sport it is, you need to make sure you stay together and play for the team. And we need to, uh, you know, we need to continue to, to work with that and understand that, and um, you know, because we've got a very very good group uh, on and off the field, and a very close group, and uh, understanding what that means uh, when we when things go bad bad is is how we're going to get better as a playing group. Geelong have that sort of team that can go on an onslaught. Um, it's a big challenge you adding in Anzac Day as well, but it's a big challenge with a team that can do that as well, isn't it? Yeah, big challenge, and you know we we welcome that. You know, it's uh, we're excited for that challenge, and as I said, Anzac weekend, it's going to be a a great weekend to be involved in, and um, you know we, as I said, we're really excited to get out there Saturday night and. Uh, we're, we're hoping for a, for a big crowd and a, a big support from our fans because uh, we know that they were disappointed on the weekend, but we need them out there Saturday night uh, supporting us and, and we're going to 
uh, turn it around and make sure we uh, we get back to our best footy. Improvement is just one week. Like uh, can you can find that consistency and it won't relapse. Oh, consistency is is something that will happen over um, you know over gradual weeks. But so this weekend we're focusing on Geelong and making sure we get that right, and, and then the consistency will come from that. Um, you know uh, the the games after that with Richmond and Carlton, these sort of time, these sort of games. But right now we're focusing on Geelong and make sure we get it right against them. Keith, did you have to talk to Koshi about either you or Ken about those comments, or just accept them? No, no, no. It's, it's not a matter of accepting them. You know, we uh, we don't dodge um, any any scrutiny uh, from from within, and uh, you know, there were, no, there were never those conversations at all. It's simply a matter of what what happens internally. Um, you know, making sure that that is at the highest level. Um, it's honest. Uh, it's uh, it's focused on an outcome, um, and I know that occurs, so you know we uh, we, we have no no issue with that. Um, you know, I think that uh, uh, just diverting back to, to, to the Anzac Day um, theme, you know, there's going to be it's a, it's an enormous opportunity because the event is elevated uh, in the importance and its importance to, to, to the people and for our for our fans. I know they'll be coming um, to, to to see Port Adelaide on on, the, on this stage. Um, there's going to be a, a fantastic march. Um, we're, we're doing it differently this year. We're going to be marching down um, from the mall, down Kintour Avenue, past the, the new memorial. Um, our our pre-match um, experience will be enhanced by, by, by the, um, the ceremony that always occurs on Anzac Day, and there'll be some nice nice things involved in there. So, you know, we, we, we can't wait to get there. I know the playing group are uh, absolutely excited about it, and... Um, and it's an, you know, this is a great thing about competitive sport is that you can turn it around really, really quickly. Um, and you know, we, we know that uh, the experience that um, you know, we had uh, in Canberra on the weekend is not Port Adelaide that uh, um, we expect or that or the team expects and, uh, and, that, that, and, and it's, not, it's not the real group. So um, we're looking forward to getting back out there. And Joe, sorry. Joe, you played that great, I think, fourth form of your Anzac Day game last year. Probably one of the best first calls ever seen from from the club. Um, can this bring out the best in you and the, and the team this sort of occasion? Yeah, look, I think we've shown over the last um, you know three or four years with Kenny, we do love the big stage, and uh, it is as it is a big weekend. And uh, but the fact is, we need to turn around no matter what weekend it was, and uh, it just just happens to be Anzac weekend and a, and a big stage against a, a quality opposition and a big opposition. So uh, it's exciting. It's exciting, and we uh, as a group we're. We're training tonight, and we we can't can't wait to get out there tonight, and then counting down the days for Saturday night. Travis, has morale been good, or has it been a little bit of heavy lifting early in the week? No, morale's been fine. Uh, and again, today we had uh, some weights and and uh, training this morning, and the the group is still uh, you know as bubbly and as as up as ever, and that's what you need to be. I mean, you can't. No matter the result, you can't have a fluctuation in in uh, in morale, and and our group's been fantastic in that. And, uh, as I said, the form hasn't been good enough from from a lot of our senior players, and we'll continue to fight out of that. Um, you know, we we're not going to get anywhere by giving in and um, you know conceding our form. Uh, we need to keep fighting, and, and I know this group will work hard. Uh, you know, it may not happen overnight, but we're going to keep fighting, and and that's what we've been able to do over the last few years, and we're going to keep doing that. Mm. Two players that really caught the eye in the combination of Dangerfield and, and Selwood. Yep. Much talk about them. Mm -hmm. How do you probably shut them down, or do you back yourself and go flat out against them? Oh, look, they're, they're, they're quality players, and I think um, you know Dangerfield's been a, a huge addition to that club, and probably freed up Joel a little bit from the contested side of things. But we need to we need to beat them as a playing group uh, and as a midfield group. And uh, our midfield on the weekend was was nowhere near up to standard. Uh, we've got a huge challenge this weekend, and. As I said, playing against Geelong, it's a, a huge challenge, but we embrace it again as a midfield group. We embrace the challenge of coming up against those two quality op oppositions, but also, uh, you know, Caddy and Blicars and these sort of guys in there who mm. are very good players as well. With training at the moment and the main session tonight, do you look at changing tactics at all or getting people on board with the game plan? Oh, look, tactics don't change. Um, you know, as we said at the start of the season, what we learnt from last year is we've got to keep it simple and not try and change the world. Yeah, things aren't going our way at the moment, but as I said, there's some players out of form. Um, and and that's, in, that's starting with myself, and we need to make sure that we fight out of that and, and get, back in a, get back into form. You know, there's, we showed against Essendon the way we play our footy is 
is still really good footy, but we need to do it as a, as a playing group, as a team. And uh, right now there's too many not in form uh, helping that team out, so we need to get back to that. Okay, can I get your view on the whole grand final replay now being scrapped? Mm. Are you comfortable with where it sits? Because I think it's still being deliberated about, isn't it? Uh, a golden point or a golden goal. Oh, look, I, I, don't, I think it, I think it's decided. Um, I, I'm really comfortable with it. I, you know, I, my, my personal preference uh, would always be to, to, to finish get, to get the result on the day, and um, you know, it, it is a very very tough task. I think that people use the Fremantle example. You know, had they had to um, front up and, and, and come back mm. for a second week, that would have been incredibly difficult. Um, I just think that there is such a build-up emotionally and uh, physically to a game like that um, from, from the playing group and, and the, the, the football world, getting it done and dusted on the day you know, makes a lot of sense. I, I think it's a great decision.